So we've got this expanding universe filled with mostly hydrogen and helium gas? Correct. How do we get from these gas clouds to the twinkling stars we see at night? Well, gravity is the cosmic sculpture at play here. These vast clouds of gas spread across unimaginable distances have a tiny bit of gravitational pull towards each other. And over millions of years, this pull causes the clouds to slowly contract. So it's like a slow motion cosmic ballet with these giant gas clouds gracefully drawn together by gravity's invisible hand. A poetic way to put it. And as the gas cloud collapses, it starts to spin like a figure skater pulling their arms in. Oh, interesting. Yeah. And this spin helps to distribute the angular momentum and prevents the cloud from collapsing too quickly. So it's not just a simple collapse. There's like a choreography to it. Absolutely. And as the cloud contracts further, the temperature and pressure at its center increase dramatically, eventually reaching a point where something truly remarkable happens, nuclear fusion. Nuclear fusion, the powerhouse of stars. Precisely. Can you remind us what's happening at the atomic level during this process? Sure. So, imagine hydrogen atoms, the simplest elements in the universe, one proton and one electron, being squeezed together with such force that they fuse to form helium. This fusion releases an incredible amount of energy, and that's the very energy that makes stars shine. So stars are like giant ongoing fusion reactors converting hydrogen to helium. That's a great way to think about it. Incredible. But they don't last forever though, do they? What happens when a star runs out of hydrogen fuel? Well, the fate of a star depends largely on its mass. Massive stars burn through their fuel much faster and end their lives in spectacular explosions called supernovae. Supernovae, those brilliant cosmic fireworks. I've seen pictures. When a massive star exhausts its hydrogen, it starts fusing heavier elements like carbon and oxygen in its core. And this process continues until the core becomes so dense and hot that it collapses under its own gravity, triggering a shock wave that blasts the star's outer layers into space. Scattering those elements across the universe. That's right. And here's where it gets really interesting. The elements on the periodic table, like carbon, oxygen and even gold, require the immense mass, pressure and heat of a star to form. It's in stars that atoms are pushed together, fusing protons and electrons to create these elements. All the stuff of the universe can only be made inside stars. So it's not just a simple fade out, it's a dramatic explosive end that sends material hurtling across the cosmos. Precisely. During a supernova, the extreme heat and pressure create heavier elements like gold, uranium and many others. These combined with the lighter elements from the star's outer layers become part of the interstellar medium, the raw material for the next generation of stars. The death of a star doesn't just mark an ending, it forms the elements that scatter across the universe, creating the building blocks for future stars, planets and even life. It's like a cosmic recycling program. That's such a beautiful way to put it. And here's the mind-blowing part. Those very elements, forged in the heart of stars, eventually become the seeds of new stars, planets, and ultimately, us. Wow, as Carl Sagan famously said, we are made of star stuff. Yeah, it's, it's a profound thought that the universe isn't just out there, it's in us. Every atom in your body, from the iron in your blood to the calcium in your bones, the carbon in your DNA, and the oxygen we breathe, all of this was and can only be created in the heart of a star. We are stardust, star stuff, children of the stars. Exactly. I've heard about that before, but it takes on a whole new meaning when you actually understand the processes that are involved. That's right, we are intimately connected to the cosmos. It really is a pretty amazing thought to pause on for a moment. We've gone from a tiny point of infinite density to a universe teeming with stars and galaxies, and ultimately, to the very elements that make up life as we know it. And this is just the beginning of our exploration.